Numerical Computation, Chapter 2, Video 7. In this video, we will go through arrows in polynomial interpolation. So we will um, present the arrow theorem and we'll give the proof. So let's um, set up the problem. So we have a function, we call it fx, um, which is defined on interval from a to b. And we have a set of distinct points, xi's, they are also on the interval from a to b. So i runs from 0 to n, so I have n plus 1 points. And then and let pn now be a polynomial of degree n. So this fancy pn means the set of functions that are polynomial of degree less than or equal to n. So we want the polynomial pn to interpolate f exactly at the points xi. So pn evaluated xi equals to f evaluated at xi for all the i from 0, 1 to n, n plus 1 points. The arrow function, which we call e of x, is simply defined as the difference between the function f and your interpolating polynomial pn. So f is defined on the interval from a to b, and p is defined for all x. Therefore, um, the distance, you subtract these two functions, it's defined on the interval from a to b. Now here's the arrow theorem. It says that there exists some value psi. I don't know exactly where, but I know for sure it exists, such that this arrow here exactly equal to 1 over m plus 1 factorial times f to the m plus 1 derivative evaluated psi times this big thing here, which is a product of x minus xi for i run from 0 to n. So there are n plus 1 terms being multiplied in this expression. And this arrow formula holds for all x on the interval from A to B. I would like to remark that this is actually a very strong statement. So pay attention here. Here is an equal sign. So the right hand side here is actually the exact value for the arrow. It's not even an estimate or an upper bound. We will now try to establish a proof for this theorem. The proof begins by first ruling out a couple of trivial cases. So let's first consider the case where um, your function f is itself a polynomial of degree less than or equal to n. Then what can we say? Then we know the uniqueness theorem tells us that if you have two polynomials of degree less than or equal to n interpolating the same data point, they must equal to each other. Then the arrow is identically zero, so the proof is trivial, so we don't consider that. For the rest, we assume now f is not a polynomial of degree n, so what it means is that if you differentiate f n plus 1 times, you still get something non-zero. So here's another case which is trivial. So if we choose a point x which is exactly equal to xi for some i, so that's a point where polynomial pn is interpolating the function then we would have the arrow would equal to f at xi minus pn at xi, and they are equal, so the arrow is zero, and the result is again trivial. Okay, now for the rest, we would consider x does not equal to xi for any i. Okay. And we will use the notation, we call this function um, which is the product of this m plus 1 terms, x minus xi, we call it w of x. And we notice that there will be m plus 1 of these terms, x minus xi, multiplying with each other, and in the end this becomes a polynomial of degree m plus 1. So the highest power is x to the power m plus 1. 
So this function wx has the following property. If you evaluate it at xi, what happens? Well, that means one of the factor will be zero, so w is zero. Secondly, this is a polynomial of degree m plus one, and if we look at the highest power is x to the power m plus one, and that is just multiplied with x times x times x in this expansion. So the coefficient in front of this term would be 1. So w of x will be x to the power m plus 1 plus some lower powers of x. Then you can differentiate this w x m plus 1 times and all the other terms will be 0. So this derivative will simply equal to the derivatives of x to the power m plus 1. So think of that. If you differentiate this once, you get m plus 1 times x to the n. And you differentiate it again, you have another term n, now multiplied by x to the n minus 1. And if you keep doing it, and you see each time you differentiate, you multiply by a number that's one smaller than the one you multiply previous round. So in the end, this exactly becomes m plus 1 factorial. So remember that this we will need later on. And now fix a y um, such that y lies on the interval between a and b and y does not equal to any of the interpolating point. Okay? And then we define a constant. We call it c. It's fy minus pny over w at y. Okay, hang on there. We need to define one more function. We call it var phi of x, which is f of x minus pn of x minus c times w of x. So the c we just defined up here. So in this argument, w is a fixed number, so c is a constant, okay? And for this phi here, x is the variable. We are now interested in finding all the zeros for the function phi. So let's see, if we put in xi and evaluate phi at xi, what do I get? I get f of xi minus pn of xi minus c times w at xi. So since pn interpolate f at xi, the first two terms, these two terms here, would equal to zero, so it's gone. And then the w evaluated xi, which we know according to the definition of that, that is zero as well. So zero minus zero, I get zero. And this holds for i equals to zero, one, two, all the way to n. So there are n plus one zeros from this argument. And I say there is another zero, let's see. If we evaluate the var phi at y, what do we have? We have fy minus pn of y minus c times w of y. So go back and look at the definition of c, c exactly equal to this. So c times w of y would equal to exactly the numerator here, right? So this term here would be f of y minus pn of y. So what do we have here? Well, we get 0. So y is a 0. Now, adding up to what we have found previously, this would give us n plus 2 zeros. Okay, so phi of x has at least n plus 2 zeros. There might be more, but we haven't checked that. But we know for sure there are n plus 2 zeros. And now here comes our kind of a deduction argument. Okay, so phi of x has at least n plus 2 zeros on the interval from a to b. Mm -hmm. So what if I differentiate the phi once? So we know if you differentiate a function once, then it loses one zero. 
so phi prime will have m plus one zeros on that interval. If you differentiate it again, so phi double prime now will have n zeros on the interval from a to b. And you can continue this argument and differentiate all the way to phi to the m plus one times derivative. So you see, and then you keep reducing, this gives you exactly one zero on the interval from a to b. So that zero is very important. We will denote this zero psi, okay? And then that means phi, phi m plus one's derivative evaluated at some psi on the interval a, b will be zero. So what is the m plus one derivative of my function y phi? So let's differentiate y phi m plus one times. So this y phi and it will be just f differentiated m plus one times minus the pn, which is a polynomial of degree n, that will give you zero if you differentiate that many times, minus c is a constant, and then w, you differentiate m plus one times, evaluate cosine, and that equals to zero, according to our deduction above. Now recall this term, w, to the m plus one's derivative earlier, we studied, and we know this exactly equals to m plus one factorial, okay? And plug that in, then we know this guy must equal to this guy. So write out this guy must equal to that guy, and then we plug in the expression for c. c is this guy, that's how we define c, and w to the m plus one derivative is equal to m plus one factorial. Notice now, if we um, don't look at the intermediate step, and then we have this equation. And what's on the numerator up here is actually e at y, right? And we could keep the e y on the left-hand side of the equation and move everything else to the other side. And then we actually get an expression for the arrow. So furthermore, we notice that in the argument, we um, did not have any constraint on y. So in this argument here, the y is actually arbitrary. So now we can treat y as the variable and let it vary. We can write it into x. So this expression here becomes, here is exactly e of x, which we have here is equal to that. And you move this to the other side and this to the other side of the equation. And that's exactly what you have. And we can write back the expression for w, which is the product of these x minus xi's. And we see that's exactly what we wanted to prove. That's the arrow formula. And it holds for some cosine on the interval from a to b. We might not know the exact location of this cosine, but we know for sure there exists at least one. So this proves the theorem of the arrow estimate. Next video, we'll look at some examples.